Antarctica is a desert of ice and snow and arouses curiosity and admiration in many people. Part of the amazement comes from the fact that virtually no one is allowed to travel to Antarctica. Today, we'll discuss all of the many reasons why Antarctica is such a forbidden continent and why no one is allowed to travel there. Let us know if you could visit any forbidden location in the world, where would it be? Share your thoughts in the comments. Antarctic Treaty in 1957 and 1958, a number of countries signed an agreement that would detail the rights that each of these countries had on land in the Antarctic. After the snowy content had already been examined, traversed, and measured by a few brave researchers, its importance to the climate and natural world is irrefutable. Because of this, many countries wanted to band together to protect the icy landmass at all costs. This contract basically states that a large area of the Antarctic may not be entered or used by anyone without explicit permission from every country involved in the treaty. In this area, which takes up a large majority of the island, only scientists who conduct research for peaceful purposes are allowed. The aim of this is to ensure that the local biology does not lose its balance. To ensure that this is possible for many years to come, humans have been forbidden from stepping foot in this area. This makes sure that the wildlife is undisturbed and the natural life is allowed to grow in abundance. In addition, this treaty represents an important step in the field of politics. It was the first joint decision and cooperation between several countries after the Second World War. For the purpose of the environment, 12 countries have jointly agreed to this goal and signed this treaty. The entire continent was also divided up equally among many countries, and no one is allowed to claim the continent as a whole. The seven countries of Argentina, Chile, Australia, New Zealand, France, Norway, and the UK all hold a stake. What does this contract achieve? The ban on exploring Antarctica is intended to protect both the environment and individuals. In extreme cases, temperatures can drop to minus 90 degrees Celsius. At such temperatures, the oxygen level in the air drops, brain performance is reduced, and every part of the body is at risk of frostbite. These circumstances are life-threatening and can only be mastered with the right equipment and special training. In addition, a large number of plant and animal species are found in the Antarctic. There are underground mountains, as well as volcanoes and unique types of moss and grass. For research purposes, as well as for peace in the animal's local climate and the ecosystem, all contact with the outside world is strictly forbidden. Protection of Animals a large variety of mammals live in Antarctica and must be protected at all costs. Small animals such as krill and beetles, but also seals, whales, penguins, killer whales, leopard seals, blue whales, and various species of birds can be found here. They all have predators and this treaty helps to ensure that there's a natural balance. Due to the low number of plants, almost all of these creatures are predators. Exceptions are krill, phytoplankton, and zooplankton. They have adapted to the conditions in cold water and survive by drawing energy from sunlight, meaning they don't have to eat other animals or plants to survive. Number 1. Seals there are a total of four different seal species in Antarctica. These include the leopard seal, the southern elephant seal, the Weddell seal, and the crab eater. Their strategy is to go where they suspect their prey will be. There, they wait patiently until an animal appears and then they snap. Seals are mostly harmless to humans. However, in times of extreme hunger or simple confusion, there have been times when a seal attacked a human. Therefore, it's better to keep your distance from these adorable animals, even though they may look warm and snuggly. In reality, they're vicious hunters who will stop at nothing to land their next meal. Number 2. Penguins 
Penguins spend most of their lives in the water, but come ashore for a short time every day. During the mating season, they gather in crowds and birth their children. The parents then keep the eggs warm with their bodies on land until the little ones hatch. They feed on krill and small fish that they catch while hunting in the water. In the first few weeks after hatching, the parents go hunting and bring the food back to their children to share. Number 3. Whales Whales come to the Antarctic region in the summer and hunt all sorts of marine wildlife. The most famous whale in this area is the killer whale, an aggressive and highly successful hunter. Its prey consists of seals, seabirds, and other smaller species of whales. When they hunt in groups, they're even able to kill animals that are much larger than themselves. Blue whales, the largest animals in the world, have also been spotted in Antarctic waters. They can be up to 33 meters long and weigh 120 tons and feed on krill and plankton, which they filter through their whiskers. The whales in this area are incredibly interesting to watch, as their behavior seems to adapt a bit to the environment they're in, and Antarctica is certainly a unique place. Number 4. Albatross This bird is highly unusual and can be somewhat rare to spot in the wild. The albatross is known for having the largest wingspan of any other bird on Earth. They're recognized as being king of the birds in a way. With outstretched wings, their limbs can measure as wide as 3 meters. This allows them to glide in the air for several hours without having to move their wings. In addition to this, they can even survive on seawater and only need to go ashore for the mating season. This reduces their risk of being eaten by predators and helps them repopulate much more easily than some other bird species. These particular birds are unmistakable for their beautiful white head and black eyebrows. How it all began, the history of Antarctica. As early as the 15th century, mankind's spirit of discovery led to more and more parts of our Earth being discovered at a rapidly increasing speed. First, Ferdinand Magellan comes across Tierra del Fuego, then Francis Drake discovers that Tierra del Fuego is an island. Although the men advanced so far south that they could observe the meeting of the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, they did not yet reach Antarctica. In 1773, James Cook was the first person to cross the Arctic Circle. He also discovered the Sandwich Islands and the island of South Georgia, where seal hunters settled. However, more than 40 years later, in 1820, the Englishman Edward Bransfield was the first to reach the Antarctic Peninsula with his ship and crew. A year later, John Davies, a seal hunter, was the first person to set foot on the Antarctic mainland. After further expeditions and tons of research, information about the Earth's wildly variable climate was finally obtained in 1892. Fossils found in Antarctica have proven that just a few hundred years ago, there must have been a significantly warmer climate in the area. This is followed by discoveries of ships and entire crews that had become trapped under the Antarctic ice for many years, lying in wait beneath the surface before their bodies could finally be recovered hundreds of years later. In 1902, a geological expedition was carried out with a large group of researchers, but the first attempt to reach the South Pole failed. Nine years later, five Norwegians were the first to reach the South Pole and set their flags on the ground. A year later, the South Pole was reached again, but the entire team died on the way back due to hunger and extremely cold temperatures. In the following years, it was possible to cross the Antarctic by plane, which enabled a more precise mapping of the continent. Americans were also creating a military base on the continent. In the same year, the protection of the Antarctic became more important to countries around the world, as all of this newfound travel was beginning to impact the natural ecosystem. The polar explorer, Admiral Richard Byrd Jr., dropped all flags of UN-related countries into the ice to create a symbolic unity. Ten years later, the Antarctic Treaty was established. How close can you get to Antarctica? 
Unless you're an excellent, highly skilled scientist, it will be difficult to tread too close to Antarctica, but not impossible. There are a few cruise ships that tourists can use to approach the icy desert, but none of these ships stay in the area for very long. There are even a few marked spots where these ships stop and people are allowed to go ashore and explore. However, these areas make up less than 2% of the total of Antarctica and do not allow the entire continent to be explored. Airplanes sometimes fly over, but there was a rule for this in the Antarctic Treaty that no commercial aircraft is allowed to stay in Antarctic airspace for more than 16 minutes. This is mainly due to security concerns, because the place is so isolated that a search unit would take a very long time to reach them if tragedy struck. In addition, there are extreme temperatures, rapidly changing wind conditions, and rapidly falling and rising air pressure that could pose a serious threat for most planes. This makes it dangerous and difficult to maneuver an aircraft over the area. What if you break the rules? Those who enter the Antarctic without a permit can expect a fine of up to 8,300 euros. For other violations of the law on this continent, a rule was built into the Antarctic Treaty. In this case, persons are subject to the jurisdiction of their country if it's one of the seven shareholders. If the person's country of origin does not belong on this list, a decision is made at the international level. How do scientists live? About 4,000 people live in Antarctica during the summer months when it's still cold, but at least the sun provides some light and heat. There are a total of 80 research stations, which are operated by 30 different countries. They go on expeditions, observe wildlife, measure the surface, and study the effects of global warming. In the dark and much colder winter months, there are only up to 1,000 researchers at the stations. Now, you can imagine that it can get pretty boring on such an icy continent with no access to entertainment or loved ones. Going out is not always possible, and especially not for long, and there are not many other activities. However, to give the local researchers a bit of a civilized feel, there are a few coffee shops, supermarkets, and even ATMs there. Do we really know the truth? Of course, there are also conspiracy theories about the isolated place in the most southern area of our natural world. Just like with Area 51 or many other places in the world, conspiracy theories about Antarctica run rampant. Some of these theories claim that certain countries, particularly Germany, set up a secretive base in Antarctica back during World War II. It has been alleged that Germany used the continent to research alien spacecraft, with some people claiming to have seen German-powered UFOs entering a tunnel buried deep within Antarctica. No one has ever been able to confirm these theories, but considering how desolate and isolated the continent really is, it makes sense that countries may have used this to their advantage and used it for secret government projects. Many of these theories end up claiming that there's a secret underground city or thriving society buried deep beneath the surface of the ice. We don't really know how these theories came to be, but the likelihood of there being an underground Antarctic base is quite small. Antarctica is a truly beautiful place, but we have to protect the continent at all costs. It's a shame that more humans aren't allowed to explore the icy wasteland, but it seems like these rules and regulations have been enacted for our own good. After all, the continent is super dangerous. What do you think of the Antarctic Treaty and the basic rules for the continent? Let us know in the comments if you feel this is a good or bad thing. Should more people be allowed to visit? Thanks for watching. Be sure to hit that like button and ring the notification bell for more videos.